Final Space is an animated sci-fi series created by Erlen Rogers, who originally developed this cartoon as a YouTube short. It was later picked up by TBS for a full series, and lasted for three seasons before being abruptly cancelled. This was due to a studio merger behind the scenes where campaigns to bring back the show have been notably recognised. I overall really enjoyed this series, it was fun, full of adventure, and had plenty of memorable characters that will stay with me for a long time. These characters were easily the best part of the show, and I love how the writing didn't shy away from making significant changes to its protagonists. Some of these were more permanent than others, but it's refreshing to see a cartoon series embrace this as a strength. One character I personally really liked was Clarence, an alien con artist portrayed hilariously by Conan O'Brien. Introduced in the second episode of season one, nothing was really known about the character other than being used as a plot device. Get your finger out of my tummy. Ooh, it speaks. It wasn't until the second season where Clarence became part of the main cast. The Toro Regatta is the premiere episode for season two, picking up from the bleak conclusion of the first season. The main character Gary and Hugh, now in his new body, crash land on the junk planet where Gary sees the familiar face of Clarence plastered on a nearby billboard. Oh, that is truly disgusting. You're disgusting. This reintroduction reaffirms his selfish and possessive characteristics, treating both Gary and Hugh as property. That I now own you. You don't own me! We are also introduced to his adopted children, Ash and Fox, who become part of the main cast. I found this family dynamic unusual, where the pair show a distinct loyalty to their corrupt father, who appears proud of them both, but still in a possessive way. I was surprised to learn how a significant portion of the fanbase really disliked Clarence. This does make sense, whereby design he is intentionally made to be despised, lacking any redeeming qualities as a person. He is manipulative, selfish, and controlling, all of which are shown throughout the second season. On the other hand, I liked Clarence a lot for his entitled attitude and unusual humour. A lot of the comedy throughout Final Space is made to be grotesque, and Clarence was the ideal character to further the more crass jokes. Martini? Clarence, we all know that's your own piss, but is it really? This was easily done thanks to his crude personality type, where his selfish attitude segregated him from the rest of the team. In the episode The Setup, this is where Clarence makes arguably his biggest mistake. Coming up with a fake holiday called Carnivolo just to glorify himself, he is disappointed when this backfires. The entire team are seated together for dinner, where as part of the holiday tradition, it is known to compliment one another. Clarence is blatantly blatantly fishing for compliments to flatter his ego, but when given nothing, this shows an unexpected vulnerability. He is obviously upset, and takes this personally, even though he brings this on himself. Then I bid you both a dark carnivore, a dark oh. Turning his back on the only family he's ever known, he betrays the team in favour of proving his worth and loyalty to someone else. By this point, it is obvious he is uncomfortable in his own skin. He struggles with a lack of popularity, but is also ignorant as to why nobody seems to care about him. In one last attempt to make himself feel worthy, he steals the dimensional keys which were collected across the second season, and willingly hands them over to Gary's mother, Cheryl. At this point in the series, Cheryl is seemingly working against Gary. She charms Clarence and preys on his loneliness, which influences the betrayal. Chased by the team, he makes a daring escape and quite literally changes his skin to remove all familiarity. Being named called a snake and a rat has never been so hilariously disturbing. You seem surprised. As always, I applaud the art style and creepy animation for this series in particular. This moment really did take me by surprise, wondering if this was going to be a permanent change to the character. Clarence is quite clearly a fan of using and now wearing the skin of other beings. He changes a couple of times where he then meets with Cheryl and willingly hands over the dimensional keys. In a predictable turn of events, he is also betrayed where his advances are rejected. Although he brought this on himself, I do pity his disappointment when the loneliness sets in. You can feel the regret where he suddenly realises the error of his ways. When Gary discovers what Clarence has done, the frugal attempt to make things right is instantly shot down, and rightly so. The team makes a harsh decision and leaves him behind in favour of going after Cheryl. In my opinion, it was an abrupt way to leave the character, obviously hinting that we would perhaps see him again later down the line. 
I was hoping this would have been sooner, but his redemption would not occur until the third season episode, Hyper Trans Dimensional Bridge Rising. His character arc arguably comes full circle. A lot happens throughout the third season, including the unfortunate death of his adopted son, Fox. With the team stuck in the alternate dimension known as Final Space, they need someone to activate a portal to their home dimension from the other side. Running out of options, Ash makes the suggestion that the team should contact Clarence for help, but to also break the news that Fox has died. Returning to the junk planet from season 2, Clarence is found to be alone and struggling with his well-being. Drinking and lying on his stomach, a robot approaches him stating there is an incoming transmission that he needs to see. Although Clarence as a character was displeasing at the best of times, it's saddening to see his weakest points. Furthering this, the character model is updated where his physical appearance has changed with a full white beard and unwashed clothing. No one cares about me. He wallows in self-pity, stating that nobody cares about him. Catching him off guard, the transmission of Ash gives him an unexpected rush of hope. Talking to him, she reveals the tragic news that Fox has died. Fox is dead. Oh, oh. <laughs> this is one of the few times where Clarence shows genuine emotion. It's unique to see him look beyond his own entitled attitudes and actually care about somebody else. He demonstrates compassion for this loss, sharing those feelings with Ash. It could be argued that she purposefully told him this information in order to coax him for help, which I am sure influenced his decision. When asking Clarence to help the team, he agrees and even shows a hint of his usual self still being present. And hurry up, yo! Shut it, primate! He leaves everything behind, which is a bold move and a huge step away from his selfish characteristics. When he turns his back on the junk planet, leaving the robot in charge, he recognizes how life is more meaningful than possession. Saying out loud that it's just stuff is a progressive moment for the character. Unfortunately for Clarence, and in turn Gary and the others, the transmission from Ash was broadcast across the universe. With the amount of enemies these characters have made over the series, this does not bode well for the mission ahead. As instructed, Clarence arrives at the planet Caldum 1. He is then suddenly ambushed and met by various antagonists from across the show. This includes the De Winter family, Time Swap Sammy, the evil Kevin Mech, the Queen of Galang 22, and Todd, who is the most determined to stop Clarence. Todd was one of my least favourite antagonists from the second season, where he blames Gary for the death of his family. In order to destroy Gary and seek revenge, he must therefore kill Clarence. One unexpected addition to this fight is Clarence's close friend, Fraskenhauer, who jumps in to try and even the odds. Throughout this fight sequence, he is more of a distraction, allowing the task at hand to be completed. Amongst all the chaos whilst activating the portal, Clarence is shot in the back twice. Revealing the shooter to be Todd, this takes an unexpected turn where the Kevin mech stabs Todd in the chest. Clarence is ours. Both now struggling to survive long enough to complete their own missions, Todd points his blaster at Clarence. Recognising that he is most likely going to die, he reflects on his life during these final moments. It's interesting to see how Todd is willing to die for hatred and revenge, whereby he's basically dying for nothing. There is no gain, and Clarence sees this whilst reflecting on his own life choices. He draws a comparison between Todd's revenge and the feeling of shame. He confesses how his actions of betrayal were wrong, and that this was enough to destroy every piece of him. He offers this advice to Todd, who seems apologetic at first, but instead shoots Clarence once again. It's a harsh scene where Todd is at peace under the impression that Clarence has been killed, therefore killing Gary once and for all. Determined to complete his mission, Clarence successfully switches on the machine which opens the portal to final space. In his heartbreaking last moments, he looks at a photo of the only true family he has ever known. Having completed one redeeming task that would heavily benefit those he wronged, Clarence passes away knowing that in the end, he did the right thing. Final Space has a way of writing heartfelt and memorable characters that really allow you to connect with their inner struggles. Making his journey of redemption feel complete, using Clarence as a plot device worked to further advance the series. Even though the original intention is to hate Clarence, turning this around in the space of one episode is impressive. 
I commend the writers for making this decision and applaud Conan O'Brien's performance. Even though this is the last we see of Clarence, I really hope the third season is not the last that we see of Final Space. With the season 3 ending cliffhanger, it was disappointing to hear the series was cancelled so abruptly. Show creator Olin Rogers is pushing for some form of continuation. Whether it be a fourth season or an extended TV movie, just like Clarence, these characters deserve closure, and hopefully one day, we will see this happen. That's going to wrap up this video looking at the redemption of Clarence from Final Space. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, be sure to leave me a like down below. Let me know in the comments if you would like to see more videos focusing on a specific cartoon character. As always, suggestions are welcome, and for more content, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel, DVD Review Studios. Are you threatening me?